Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here, and today we're going to go through installing MUDAC on a full-blown Windows 11 system. Now, this is a nice, fresh virtual machine. It's going to be a little slow from time to time, but just bear with me here. So, MUDAC isn't just a script to install a bunch of emulators that you could just do yourself. It's an emulator installation and configuration tool which adds bezels and hotkeys and performance fixes. There's a lot of stuff going on here, cloud backups, BIOS checkers. There's all sorts of good stuff that MUDEC provides that you're not going to get doing a one-off installation of all of these different emulators. So remember that before you scoff at having to back a Patreon for $3.50 to get access to the Windows version of MUDEC. The first thing you'll need to do is be on Patreon Unfortunately, this is a step you'll have to take and you'll have to join for the $3.50 a month tier. You'll need to pay for the first month and you'll get access to it. Uh, you'll be able to decide whether or not you feel that this is a valuable investment for your cash. So once you're logged in, you're going to need to uh, back MUDEC for the $3.50 and that will give you access to what you really need, which is the download for the MUDEC Windows package. Now, before we go on, there's a couple of other things you're probably going to want to set up in advance in order to make this as smooth as possible. Retro Achievements is a methodology of getting trophies for playing old games. It's really amazing. It's completely free. Just sign up and you can see here all of the games that I've played. You can see on my user wall all of the games that I've played, what I've gotten awards for. Uh, it's it's very, very cool. So I've been playing ColecoVision's Donkey Kong. I've been playing Mr. Do's arcade game, and I've got trophies, 17 out of 22. This is really neat stuff, and it sort of breathes a whole new life into the concept of emulation. So it's worthwhile, and again, it's free. Get your credentials set up before you install EmuDeck, and life will be a little better. Finally, we have something called ScreenScraper.fr. ScreenScraper, this is a repository of graphics, metadata, and other stuff that you're going to probably eventually want to get if you're going to use Emulation Station Desktop Edition to launch your games. This is not free. It's like a dollar a month or something using a, a tip system. So you give them a buck a month, and you have access to, I think it's like, 50,000 scrapes per day. Normally you would only get like 500 scrapes per day. So you'll never be able to scrape a decent collection in more than a few days if you don't have a subscription here. All right, so it's a buck. So now you're up to 450 a month. Okay. So just for those of you who are trying to keep track of the math. All right, so let's get this business started, shall we? We're going to go ahead and download this bat file. We're going to put it on the desktop. And we're pretty much done with the browser at this point. We've got what we need. So this is a batch file. So you might want to actually go in and take a look at the contents of this. Before you install it, if you're one of those security conscious people, I can assure you that the, I have found nothing malicious with this product. So I think it's safe to go ahead and double click to install it. Now, depending on how long it takes you to watch this video or how long this product's been in development, by the time you watch this video, you may get the dreaded Windows protected your PC and you're not going to be able to run the batch file. This is just Microsoft playing it safe. They don't recognize the app because this is behind a paywall. There's not a ton of people using it yet, so Microsoft doesn't have enough data on it to consider it safe. However, if you click more info, it'll tell you um, what it is and who published it. In this case, there is no publisher and you can run it anyway. This would be a very short video if I didn't click run it any, anyway, folks. So, Okay, so here's one of these why it costs $3.50. Eventually, this will be free. I have no doubt that eventually it will no longer be behind a paywall and you'll be able to get it for free. But if you want early access, that's, that's the way that developers make some money. They give you access to stuff before everybody else. All right, so you can see here we are going to get some user account controls if you happen to have that still turned on. This is a fresh Windows 11 virtual machine, so you're going to see all the security pop-ups, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, this is the stuff. It's doing all sorts of stuff for you. So MUDEX real power comes from being a very complex script, 
installation and configuration tool. You could get away with doing everything that Emudeck does without paying the $3.50 and spending a good chunk of your life doing all of that configuration and installation. So I suggest that $3.50 is worth hours of your time. That's all I'm saying. All right, so we're going to continue to get through this uh, prerequisites install script. And we should be getting to the meat of the MUDEC installer now. Here we go. And again, all of the operations you're seeing today are on a virtual machine. So things are running just a bit slower than they normally would. Okay, so now, now's the part where you have to prove you pay. So if you pass this batch file over to a buddy or something thinking you skirted the system, well, you didn't. Because in order to use this, you do need to log into Patreon. So we're going to do that real quick. And you're going to be told that MUDEC token would like to have access to some of your Patreon data. You're going to have to go ahead and allow that if you'd like to continue. Now, after you click allow, it's going to sit here and chew for a few moments. This happens even when I'm not on a virtual machine. So now you're going to get this MUDEC token. We're going to copy that to the clipboard. I've probably pixelated it out for the video. Even though it's a one-time use token, um, probably shouldn't be displaying that on a public video. Okay, we're going to paste that in, and it'll verify the token, and now we're ready to continue. Now, you'll only get bugged for that the first time you install, so don't worry if you think that that's going to be some sort of barrier of entry. It's not. Okay, so now you have two different methodologies. Easy mode, which just uses a bunch of recommended settings so you could get started as quickly as possible, but we're going to do custom mode because we're going to explain. First off, I want you to see everything that MUDEC's doing for your $3.50, and I also want you to um, have an idea of what sort of things uh, you might run into as you go. So let's go ahead and do custom mode. Now, select your ROM directory. So the idea is it's going to centralize your ROMs, your BIOS files, and all sorts of other stuff into a location of your choice. So it says if you do not see your SD card format at first, we're, we're probably not going to put this on an SD card. We're going to put it on a hard drive. So you're going to select this, and it will have a bug the first time you run it. I thought they had this thing squashed, but apparently not. So F is my micro is my uh, flash drive that I have all my BIOS files and ROMs and stuff on. But we're going to choose to go to C. That's where I want them to actually be installed and read from. You do not want this on a slow uh, drive. You want this on a fast internal or external hard drive, not some sort of uh, USB drive or micro SD card. And you'll see that the first time it runs, it says it's not writable and bleh. Okay, well, that's okay. Do it again, and it will work the second time. Bug has already been submitted. They know about it. Okay, so now it's working because I get the next to light up. Yay. All right, so now it tailors the MUDEC install. These are all the different platforms that MUDEC caters to, including the popular Steam Deck, which is where it came from and the Asus ROG Ally, which I've already done a video on. A lot of people didn't care for that, but whatever. Hopefully this video will replace that sufficiently. But we are on a Windows PC, and as such, we will choose Windows PC. Now, here are all the emulators that EmuDeck allows to install on your system. You're talking PS2, PS3, Switch, 3DS, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 1, PlayStation Portable, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm only going to install one of the two Nintendo Switch emulators. To be honest with you, I'm not going to do any Nintendo Switch emulation anyway, so I could probably turn that off. Probably not going to do any Wii U stuff, so I could turn that off. But we always want to make sure we keep emulation station and at least RetroArch, even if you're not going to be using a lot of these other extensive ones. RetroArch gives you like 20 or 30 different platforms to emulate, and emulation station is going to give you the easy way to get access to it. And we'll see more about that later. So I'm just going to install that. Now it will optimize and configure emulators. So this is another thing that you would have to do for each one of these emulators in turn on your own manually that you're going to get with a single click here in EmuDeck. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it all as default. Now, autosave. So RetroArch is responsible for all of these systems that you see here. 
So every one of these systems, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Sega CD, all of these systems give you the option of using autosave through RetroArch. That means when you exit the game, when you quit emulation station, you quit the emulator, it's going to immediately make a save file and you'll pick up from right where you left off. Now, for some people, that's a great thing. I'm not a fan of it personally. I, I'll i handle my own saves because you can use save states and all that other stuff inside of RetroArch. So you don't you don't need this unless you're just one of those people that have to have it. I'm, I'm going to leave it off. Ah, remember we did we talked about retro achievements. This is where we had the opportunity to add our retro achievement stuff very easily, where normally it would be very difficult and a huge pain in the butt to actually enter this after the fact. There we go. We're set. And if you like hardcore mode, if you're a retro achievements person, you probably know what that means. If not, just leave it turned off. Okay, so. This would have been a huge pain to add later. So fortunately, we added it now. That's why I, I mentioned it as a prerequisite. Game bezels. Now, you know, these are, I have, outside of political leanings, I have never seen a more polarizing topic. Game bezels or no game bezels. Off meaning every, if you keep original aspect ratio of all of your games, you're going to get black bars on the sides and on the, on the back. Top or bottom, side or side. Um, yeah. So instead of just nothingness or stretching or mutilating your retro games into fitting a screen they weren't designed for, you can use game bezels. You can tell I'm a fan, right? You can use game bezels to pad those black areas with actual, um, with actual bezels that, that look like the system in question. And these are all the ones that are affected by that, the systems. I'm going to leave them on. I'm a big fan. Aspect ratios. Okay, so... Would you like the original aspect ratio or would you like the three by two slightly slight horizontal distortion? No, I don't want any distortions. I want the original games in their original format, in their original aspect ratio. That's why I'm into emulation. If I wanted some hacked up thing, I could go buy some turnkey package. I want the original aspect ratio. How about for classic Nintendo? Do I want that, the real Super NES resolution, or do I want the default original? Now, I don't know enough about Super Nintendo to realize if this is the real thing or this is the real thing, but default original sounds like what I'm looking for. What about classic 3D games? Original aspect ratio or widescreen hacks? But you'll notice one puts black bars on the sides and one puts black bars on the top. So <laughs> if you're trying to avoid black bars, you know, taking your game and hacking it with a widescreen hack isn't necessarily probably what you're looking for. So again, I'm going to continue with the original aspect ratio. I'm going to continue to do that with these. Look, at, oh, dude, no, no. Original. Okay, now what about shaders? People love to have these shaders turned on. Listen, I guess it looks more like the old school days that way, but I'm not playing on a CRT for crying out loud. I'm going to go ahead and keep them off. Same thing here and here. Now, Emulation Station is going to be your central hub for emulation, unless you're one of those people that like to inject thousands of games inside your Steam instance, which I do not recommend. Um, you're probably going to be using Emulation Station. There are three skins, and these are, these are far from the best offerings available. It's probably time they updated this. But you can choose from one of these three skins to start off with as a default. Now, I'm a... Uh, no, uh, that's, that works for me. Okay, so here's something else that's saving you time. You can actually decide what resolution you would like to use for each of the emulators in question. Now, obviously, 1080p is what we want because I'm on a 1080p screen. So, yeah, you would actually have to go in and set all of these inside the emulators yourself. This is a huge step of saving time for you with Emudeck. Okay, so here's what Emudeck is going to do. Here's your entire installation manifest, if you will. Let's get to it. Now, we're probably going to cut some of this off, uh, obviously, because it's taking a while. But uh, you have a watch log. If you're really curious as to what's going on and how the sausage is being made, the watch log will show you all of the power script uh, or PowerShell scripting that's going on. And you'll be able to see for yourself exactly 
what's going on and what MUDEC is doing to save you time. Now, we're going to go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to sit through all of it, and we'll be back when it's finished. Now, it's probably worth noting that throughout the install, your user account control is probably going to go nuts trying to install other redistributables. These are usually redistributables required by the emulators or the emulator tools that EmuDeck is installing. Again, these are things you would have to do if you didn't already have them. Okay, so we're done with the script. Let's go ahead and close this window. And uh, we're now looking at a controller configuration. So what's important to note is MUDEC was designed to work with Steam input. So you need to launch games using Steam after adding them with Steam ROM Manager with the same emulators or emulation station. Otherwise, the controls won't work. A lot of people just next their way through here and don't realize that Steam is a big part of the equation that makes this so easy to use. So, just keep that in mind. All right, cloud saves. Now, I don't use cloud saves personally, but apparently the idea here is, and we're not going to set this up here, is each device you could set up EmuDeck on, and between each device you can sync up your game saves from your emulators. If that is something of interest to you, go ahead and try the sync stuff. I'm not interested in doing that. I'm just going to say none. Now, it's telling you pretty much what we've been talking about. You've got two ways of doing this. You can use Steam ROM Manager to inject every single game that you want to play into Steam. Not recommended, especially if you have 17,000 MAME ROMs. You know what I'm saying? Or you can use Emulation Station DE, which is a gaming hub or an emulation hub that allows you to keep everything sort of in one spot and not dirty up your Steam. Now, obviously, I'm a huge fan of using Emulation Station DE over Steam ROM Manager, but there are occasions when you might want to use it. So we're going to take a look at that as well. So now it's asking you to go ahead and open Steam ROM Manager or skip it. Let's go ahead and open it up. 